Pay no heed to the wistful grin tugging at the corners of my lips. Aye, it was a sight to behold, I tell you. With me cruel's bellies rumbling louder than the waves crashing on the shore. For I'll tell you of the time I saw sausage trees. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The scarlet saber had been cutting through the waves with the grace of a hunting shark. Her crimson sails billowing in the salty breeze. The crew was lively, their spirits were high as we sought the next adventure on the horizon. It was then that uh, Mr. Sin's voice came over the commotion and pulled me out from my thoughts. Captain, he called. His black fur was glistening in the sunlight. You should hear what Jack Jones has to say. He's spinning tails again. A grin tugged at the corner of me muzzle and Jack Jones was known for his colorful stories often bend in fiction with the hint of reality. With a nod to Jack, who had followed Mr. Sin, I motioned for him to continue. The avian cook approached with an animated favor, his wings fluttering with excitement. Well, what about the time I stocked up a longboat with sausage tree fruit? When I was a lad, I was shipwrecked and washed up on the strangest beach you ever did gleam, he exclaimed. His voice was ringing with enthusiasm. The sausages were as long as my wings, and they were succulent, oh so succulent. I listened, reminiscing about the wild tales often spilled from Jack Jones' beak. Surely not Mr. Jones, and I reckon they tasted of bacon and syrup. The crew let out a hearty laugh, but Jack's expression remained deadly serious. If I tell a lie, Captain, may I sink to me death, dragged down to a watery grave? No. Most sea folk are a superstitious lot, and we don't care for talk of sinking fates. Now, Mr. Jones, I wouldn't call ye a liar, but ye have been known to spin a yarn or two. Aye, that may be, he conceded. But I swear by me feathers this be true. His gaze was so intense that any man with the sense to question him would deserve to be drawn and quartered by his stare alone. If ye be so set on it, Mr. Jones, then let's prove your words true. Come to me, cabin. Mark it on the map. Let's see these sausage trees and whatever other plunder dot that voyage. With that, we retired to my cabin. Mr. Sin, Mr. Jones, and myself. I watched as Mr. Jones retrieved a weathered parchment map clipped into his breast feathers, carefully unfurling it onto the table in the cabin. His claw-like fingers traced the faded lines echoing into the aged paper guiding my gaze into a specific set of coordinates marked in faded ink. Captain, if you look here, he murmured, tapping a spot on the map. This be where the island lay tucked away in the forgotten corner of the sea, where the winds play trick and the currents whisper secrets. His eyes were a glint, and with a mix of nostalgia and determination, he recounted the details of his long-ago journey. And with the ease of a seasoned sailor, he retrieved the weathered quill and parchment from me desk, and as if drawing forth the memory from the depths of the sea, stroke by deliberate stroke, he sketched out the lines of a coast on his nautical chart, he the unmistakable curves of the waves, the faint silhouette of what might be those elusive sausage trees. His hand moved with purpose, each line was a testament of the vividness of his recollection. Aye, it were a sight to be seen. Here, yeah, Captain, be the bay where we dropped anchor, he explained, pointing at the island he had sketched beneath the map of old terrain. And just beyond lies the very spot where we set foot on that curious land, a place of wanderers and hazard alike. His words carried the weight of both reverence and caution, as if the island still clutched a piece of his soul within its enigmatic shores. Fine work indeed, Mr. Jones. I commended with a hint of amusement. Perhaps I should have had you as me navigator instead of me cook. He chuckled, shaking his head. Ah, and then take me from me beloved pots. Oh, no thank you, Captain. And so, spurred on by Jack's tale, we embarked on a quest to unravel the mysteries of these legendary sausage trees. The Scarlet Saber surged through the waves, her bow slicing through the water like a sword through silk. Fueled by a mix of skepticism and curiosity, the crew eagerly manned the ship their gaze unwaveringly fixed on the ever-expanding horizon. As we sailed forth, the ocean lay serene, as if nature herself had ordained this journey to be one of tranquil wonder. The gentle lull of the waves cradled the scarlet saber, guiding her with a delicate grace through the pristine waters. 
The air was filled with a serene hush, broken only by the distant cries of gulls and the soft creaking of the ship's rigging. As we neared the Fable Island, a sense of reverence washed over the Scarlet Sabre, as if the very fabric of time had folded to deliver us to this mythical realm. The sun, our familiar companion, after months of sultry voyage, bathed the scene in a soft golden glow, lending an ethereal quality to the fertile landscape that unfolded before us. The shoreline was etched with the footprints of time and shaped by the patient strokes of centuries. It seemed akin to nature's own canvas, carefully crafted by the hands of deities. The mists, like a delicate veil, parted to reveal the spectacle that awaited us, a paradise adorned with the majestic sausage trees, their bountiful branches swaying gently in the caress of the ocean breeze. Each elongated fruit a testament to the passage of time, hanging like precious ornaments, exuding an aroma that stirred the very soul and confirmed the veracity of every word that had been shared along our long, arduous journey. In that moment, as the crew stood in quiet awe, it was as if the relentless expanse of the ocean had yielded to its gleam, the sanctum of tranquility and wonder. The island stood not merely as a destination, but as a reward for the unwavering fortitude that had carried us through the endless stretch of open sea. The crew, with a mixture of awe and hunger, launched the longboats, eager to sample the delectable bounty that nature had bestowed upon this isolated paradise. I remember the taste vividly, the succulent flesh melting on my tongue. It had a strange, savory sweetness, unlike anything I'd ever experienced. Now, I wouldn't say it was meaty, more akin to that of a well-cooked bean, extraordinarily pleasant. As we savoured the bountiful feast under the whispering canopy, Marina, our loyal mermaid companion, emerged from the depths. Her presence had been a steadfast fixture amongst our crew, often keeping a watchful eye on our endeavours. She was drawn by the commotion of the alluring aroma. She gracefully surfaced near the shore, her laughter weaving through the air and mingling with the clinking of cutlery and the jovial banter of the crew. Among our eclectic company were the Ranu, that's the deer-like companions. They appeared particularly delighted by this abundant spread and unlike the meat-laden dishes that graced me own table, they usually refrained from such indulgence in that sort of fare. With curious but cautious eyes, they surveyed the newfound delicacies, their natural grace adding a serene touch to the bustling scene. We spent days on that island, basking in the luxury of contentment. Our worries were nearly forgotten, consumed by the simple joy of the present. Yet, even amidst the lush grandeur, a hint of caution stirred me, a reminder that even the most idyllic of places may hide their mysteries, and every tale, no matter how wondrous, may carry its share of consequences. It served as a guiding principle, woven into the very essence of me being, a testament to the delicate equilibrium that governed the capricious lives we lead as seafarers. And that, my friends, is how the Scarlet Sabre and her crew ventured to the island of legendary sausage trees. All thanks to the tales spun by dear old Jack, lending us to the most unforgettable adventure of our lives. But what if I were to tell ye of the day when me ship, the Scarlet Sabre, danced through a deadly ballet with the Iron Leviathan, cannons roaring and decks slick with the sweat of fear and anticipation, a game of cat and mouse, where the roles were reversed, and the hunter found itself ensnared in the very traps it set. Gather round, me friends, for a tale of cunning maneuvers and a battle that left the brine stained red. Aye, but that's another adventure for next time, I think. <laughs>